Hey, welcome everyone to the back to school training series. This is session one. We're going to all be talking about sellers. So I'm excited for you to join me. A uh, little housekeeping. I want to definitely make sure and encourage you to take a lot of notes. Um, I'm going to be saying a lot of things that are not necessarily on the screen or in the handouts that we provide you via email. This stuff comes out of my mouth that sometimes not is not written down. So if you hear something that you think is important or an aha moment, I definitely would encourage you to do so. You will be receiving this recording as well as all of the resources that I go over today. Uh, and then, of course, if you have any questions, you can reply to the email download and I'll be happy to help. So this is specifically for sellers, but a lot of this overlaps into just general business, how you run your business. So let's get this party started. Let's start with eight reasons why you should become the listing specialist uh, in today's market. All right. Well, those of you that don't know who I am, I just wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Drew Demery. I am a real estate agent just like you. Actually, I'm going into my 20th year um, and I've been a coach going into my 10th year. I am a father. I have a 19 year old daughter, Emma. She is currently in college. And I'm an entre entrepreneur. I, I believe that uh, owning multiple business and creating opportunities for yourself is kind of uh, the American dream. We are an independent coaching company. We are called the Freedom Companies. We have a coaching division, training division. We do nonprofit events uh, for actually specifically for breast cancer awareness. And we actually have some fun, inspirational merchandise. Uh, uh, for freedom as well. So visit our website, freedom.com, or sorry, the freedomcompanies.com, and you'll see all that we offer. We also are in multiple brokerages throughout the United States. Uh, we are independent. So we're in multiple states in the United States, and we're also in Canada. So if you're looking to bring coaching and training into your brokerage, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, In-person training is a passion of mine. We love it. Uh, and it brings a lot of joy to see people implement things into their businesses through our trainings. So reach out to us if you need a training for your brokerage, for your team. Um, if you're a vendor out there, we also do uh, trainings for them to support your agents. All right, enough about me. Let's get this party started as we talk about sellers. So how do we find sellers? So this is really the focal point is we've got to go where the people are, right? And you may be in a market right now where honestly, you've got leads in your pipeline that are not converting. And I think the things you got to zone in on are, are you hanging out? Are you marketing? Are you strategically prospecting to the right type of people, right? So we know and as real estate professionals that the reason why people buy and sell real estate is most often because of change in lifestyle. Right. So we go through this very quickly. Diapers, death, diamonds, divorce, diplomas, defaults and relocation. Right. So we need to make sure you're in the room or marketing to these people. Uh, I have a specific example of a coaching client where she's like diapers. What? Am, how do I do that? Right. Because both of my children are grown and out of the house. I don't really have diapers anymore. And we walk through and we coach through the opportunity that she actually goes to uh, a church that has like a daycare or uh, a, like a childcare area. And you know what? She started to volunteer in that uh, daycare area where the kids would go get dropped off so that parents could go to church. And as she started to build and connect with those, those parents, she then had opportunities to list their property because we know the more diapers, the more babies they have, there's a chance that they're going to outgrow that space. So the reason why I'm telling you that story is don't let this be a limiting belief or an excuse. You need to find a way to get in connection with people, right? Diamonds, you know, where that's weddings, right? So that's an opportunity where people are going to possibly have two homes and they need to purchase another one or get rid of one or turn it into a rental property. So where do these wedding people hang out? What expos can you attend? So I won't go into this much further, but I want you to really focus in on sellers we got to find the motivated sellers because right now interest rates are a little high. Um, equity is great, but there's really low inventory. So we got to find the sellers that are really in a need to sell situation. All right. And before I go into this, I pretty much put this on every slide of any training that I do because I am seeing an overwhelming, overwhelming challenge in our industry 
that we are forgetting that we're in a real estate business that is a contact sport, right? Are you having enough conversations a day and specifically asking for sellers, right? The old school generic script that says, if you know anybody who wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, please think of me. I would be more strategic that says, Inventory is low. Sellers are in control. There's more equity in your home than ever before. So I'm looking for specifically for sellers that want to get their house ready to cash in on this amazing market, right? So when you're having prospecting conversations, it's super important that you zone in. Just kind of think about like a dartboard. You zone in right on that center point. Don't be generic. Be very specific for the ask. I believe the universe always Whatever you put out there is what you receive. So if you're focusing on sellers, be specific with that ask to, through your sphere of influence in your database. But this is the reality of where we're at. For every 10 conversations, five people potentially say, hey, yeah, I think I might want to sell my house. Then once they go through the process of talking about putting their house on the market, fixing those repairs, doing all the things they need to do. Oh yeah, by the way, there's low inventory. Really only one to two of them actually decide to put a sign in the front yard. So it truly is a contact sport. So 10 conversations equal five opportunities, but really unfortunately it converts to only one to two pieces of business. So it shows you just like dominoes, you got to stack them up so you can uh, have the payday and the opportunities to hit your goal. So just a reminder that as we're going into this training, it is about the connections, it is, but it's also about tracking that information. I have many, many people that are like, oh, I talk to people all the time. I'm like, okay, great. Let's let's literally write their name on a piece of paper. Let's track it. And then lo and behold, they have a co the conversation with me as their coach, and they're not hitting that 10 conversation a day mark. And that is the difference. It is a numbers game. So I challenge you to track your conversations each day. All right, so we have to really realize that we're in a really sweet spot coming into this next two years of the real estate market. I know the last two years have been a roller coaster, a lot of emotions, a lot of changes, but we're in a situation where trade up sellers are going to be the future. When the market conditions change, even the slightest change, slight drop in the interest rate, slight increase in inventory, right? There is going to be an opportunity for the sellers to activate. Uh, what we call a trade-up seller. And they're actually going to give you two transactions, right? They're going to sell that current property and they're going to upgrade uh, where their lifestyle is, whether it's downsizing, upsizing, increasing price point, lower price, in, price point, uh, whatever that trade-up situation is for that seller. So the cool thing is, is if you're really focusing on seller business, you most likely will get two deals out of it. So that's where we see a lot of people when they're really transitioning or focusing the front, away from buyers into the seller-based activities, they're actually seeing the really huge increases in their production year over year because you're activating that trade-up market. So getting on the ground floor and focus on sellers now is a huge opportunity for those that are wanting to really double their business in the next couple of years. I did throw this one in. I actually, I put this in. We have another series called Thrive. And I want to just remind you that, you know what? The market in 2023, 2024, 2025 actually has happened before. And sometimes perspective is everything. History always teaches us a lesson. So if you do a little research, this chart here actually indicates the 1970s versus the 2023, actually. Um, and if you look at this beautiful little mountain of data, you see it all overlapping because the 1970s had a very similar, honestly, a very similar political client, economic client, and financial uh, climate, as well as the real estate climate. 1974, if you remember, Nixon was basically outed of the presidency. We all know what's happening in our political climate now is an upcoming election in 2024. But the interesting thing in the world of real estate is that all things are mapping out the same way. Mortgage rates averaged at a high 7%. Inflation was crazy at 11 and then kind of recovered at 3%. Housing affordability was at 100%, meaning basically housing was not affordable. It was at that 100% index to where the affordability was at a high. We were seeing that, of course, in our industry uh, in today's market. Home appreciation averaged 10%, right? We know that's not normal. We know that that's not a natural trend. But again, we're seeing those increases in equity with sellers 
that's a conversation we need to have with them because that's not sustainable and necessarily something that will happen in the future. So let's cash in on that. But in the 70s, it had the same thing. The interesting thing is also people are talking about the crash of the market, not like the 80s. Median home prices still increased in the 70s. And of course, you know this, still are increasing in the 2024 and beyond, right? The differences of the year only, the difference would be is the fact that um, unemployment was pretty pretty bad in the 70s versus 2023, 20, 2024. 20, as we're kind of going into this market, it's definitely in a good spot. Low housing inventory is obviously the the challenge or the opportunity that we face there. The reason why I bring that up is I want to inspire you or encourage you that the market is always changing. Every three and every 10 year cycles of real estate show us evidence of growth or opportunity for growth. And I'm going to tell you that when we look back in this experience and we focus on our sellers, 25, 2026, 2027, you're going to be glad you took this this training, you're going to be glad you implemented some of the things that we're going to talk about today, because it's going to lay the groundwork for an amazing business as you go forward. And I think one of the things as I preach, I feel like I preach amongst uh, my coaching clients and my training clients is you got to realize that you've got to think about the future, not the transaction of today, right? What the cool thing about sellers is that's future business, it's future opportunities. And sometimes when we're in that buyer, uh, which I love buyers. But sometimes when we're in that buyer-based business, BBB, buyer-based business, it's it's like one transaction at a time. It's one paycheck at a time. And it's challenging to feel like you're actually kind of getting in a positive momentum versus sellers. One transaction at a time really does build opportunities uh, for long-term scalability of your business. You probably have seen this lovely uh, triangle many, many times. It is tried and true listings leverage and leads, right? So this comes out of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book that's been, uh, that was written many, many, many years ago, but tried and true. Let me think about this as a business owner, as a real estate agent, am I the employee or do I own the store? In the market that we're in, if you are working primarily with buyers, you are the employee, right? You're at their beck and call. You know the inventory is tight. You know the condition of these of these properties. You know that the buyers are going through some rough things financially to get their position in place to be able to afford and uh, close on that property. But if you are providing the inventory, if you're putting the product on the shelf, if you are in control of the quality that you're putting out, or if you're in control of strategically pricing the property, if you have an opportunity to do so, you own the store. And so I want you to go into this training and into this uh, series, specifically with the back to school series that we're bringing to you, is that do you want to own the store? Do you want to put in place systems and processes and strategic plans to be the owner? Or do you want to continue to have the market control you and be the employee, right? I think you would probably choose be the owner and it starts with leads, of course. But then when we go on the left-hand side of that triangle, it definitely is listing. It doesn't say buyers, it says listings. Because we also know listings will create buyer opportunities. So it's a win-win and then leverage, time, money, energy, effort, and marketing, right? All right. Well, I want to throw some data at you because you may or may not know this. This is updated data from NAR, but 81% of sellers only contacted one agent. And if you're in the buyer's market, you're doing open houses, you know, oftentimes in this market, the agent representation is there, meaning the buyer already has an agent. The cool thing in the seller's market is that they typically only interview one to two agents. I do see some markets where they are interviewing two to three agents. And that's okay. It's an interview. Your skills, your your negotiation, how you present yourself is huge in a seller's market because it's more of an interview style relationship at the beginning. So you might have to sharpen up those skills, brush up on that presentation, really bring your A game. But really, there's a high possibility, probability that you're going to be selected as the listing agent. 65% of sellers found their agent through referrals of a friend. And if you look to the next statistic, 37% of sellers recommended their agent three or more times. So those of you that say that, hey, you are a heavy referral-based 
uh, business, which I'm excited and happy for. If we have more sellers, they refer you more. Unfortunately, in the buyer's world, they don't refer as often because they're caught up in <clears throat> and really trying to find their dream home. And they're not really thinking about maybe the services that you provide at a high level, but sellers recognize you. They see you. They understand how hard you work to prep the house, how hard you work to provide a market analysis for pricing. They understand how amazing you are at marketing their property to get offers, negotiations, to get to the closing table. So sellers will actually refer you three times more than the average buyer. Just food for thought. And those of you that are like, I love my buyers. I'm not saying that you're not going to work with buyers. What I'm going to say is that you actually, 58% of uh, buyers are now sellers, right? They had owned the previous home. That's kind of that what we talked about before, that trade-up season, right? So you're going to still work with plenty of buyers. But when we focus on sellers, the buyers come as a byproduct. They're after that. They are the juice that's squeezed out from the original lemon, right? So uh, we all know 10% is the average historical level of sellers. So that means you got to stay with them sellers a long, longer period of time, right? So if you are an agent that's three to five years in the business, there is some ripe fruit for you to harvest soon, right? The typical person lives seven, about 10 years. We're seeing people actually moving a little bit faster just because they see the equity in the market, but you have to, to stay with them. So uh, if you're in the market for 15, 10 years, you should be harvesting a lot of listings right now because sellers are moving. And then we all know the headlines of the commission's conversation about buyer agency and all that, but only 5% of sellers cited agent commission as being an issue, right? They're used to it. This is kind of the traditional way that real estate has been invented. Sellers paying commission is part of the uh, kind of the ritual or the the organic organic composition of how it's structured. So sellers don't have a problem paying compensation. So that's a, another fight that you don't need to fight. All right, let's go into the eight uh, amazing strategies to attract sellers. The first one, I hope this is a no brainer and I hope you're already doing it, but it goes to the some of the data that was just previously, previously shown to you the current owners, the cur the buyers that turned into sellers, the current property owners need to hear from you. I don't know if you have stocks or bonds or annuities or IRAs or anything like that, but most likely you have an investment um, person that gives you an annual update on how your stocks have done in the market, right? We usually, uh, at least I know that I have an annual sit down with my my financial advisor, and we talk about do we want to invest in conservative or we want to be aggressive in the stock market, right? Well, the number one largest asset, the most most profitable stock that any human that owns real estate has is the equity in their home. And we know on average, there's at least 50% equity in every real estate house. There's usually on average over one hundred eighty to two hundred thousand dollars sitting there in equity for most of the sellers in the U.S. market, right? So I would implore you: it is your job, it is your duty, it is your, <clears throat> it is your skill to provide them with an equity report, to show them, to share with them their market data that there is money in there in their pockets and it's opportunity for them to cash out. So it's pretty simple. I'm gonna be sending this to you. It's an equity report letter and you'll be able to read it when you receive it, but it says, hey, it's hard to believe that you purchased your home with me in December of, let's say 2021. And I wanted to attach a quick property comparative market analysis because you purchased your home with me, let's say 400,000. And now the general market analysis is saying that your house is worth about 550 to 600. Um, if you're thinking about selling now and cashing in on this equity, I'd love to schedule a time to tour the home because you probably made some improvements, uh, some things that will probably maybe increase your equity even more. If you're not considering selling, that's okay. I just wanted to let you know that there's this is just an opportunity to say, you know what, you made a great decision. You're making a good financial uh, future for yourself and your family. And if I don't hear from you, I'll send one to you next year. So it's just an olive branch to say, hey, did you know, right? Couple housekeeping things on this. I would use just a quick 
what we call a quick CMA, a down and dirty, nothing crazy, nothing fancy. Um, I also I wouldn't spend a lot of time on it. I would do just general within mileage or square footage or age. I wouldn't get too specific in there because we want to range. We want to kind of lay the breadcrumbs to them having a conversation with you to nail pinpoint a specific price. And I don't want you to give them an exact price because I want your natural skills and sales ability to show through when they contact you. Per a personal note in there, a little post-it note, a handwritten note, something like that. We're seeing people drop this off or put it in the mail. And then within two weeks, reaching out via email or text and say, hey, did you get the equity report? They may say yes, they may say no. And then you then say, hey, well, you know what? As a secondary thing, I would love to be able to send it to you in a PDF form just so you have awareness of your equity. You do this, you're going to get listings. How you do it systematically is what I would recommend or what I coach my clients to do is just pull all your transactions through the your whole history of your career. So say five years. And I would pull all the properties by each month. So maybe you have 10 in January, maybe you have five in February. And that is a marker. That's an indication of how many equity reports you need to send out, right? So you can, if you pull up your history and today, you know, heading into May, you know, you have 10 equity reports, you map that out, you figure out uh, strategically in your schedule, how you're going to get that accomplished. These should be 10 to 15 minute CMAs. This should not go down the rabbit hole. You need to just get them out. And it's just a touch point for the opportunity of having a conversation, right? So I'll send you the equity report cover letter. Uh, so you have a base template. You can, of course, customize it, add in your branding. But at the end of the day, I want you to use that equity report language so they really understand the power of the profit of home ownership. Number two, often overlooked, and I don't know why, because we know that humans leave their marketplace, meaning they move from one city to another city to another state all the time because of family, because of job transfers. And who knows the market better in the other area they're moving to than an agent, right? So if you're in Virginia and they're moving to Florida, you need to have that agent partner. So one of the things that I will tell you, and this is um, amazing top producer, Desiree, she, I interviewed her because 70% of her business comes from referrals. I'm like, oh my gosh, Desiree, how do you do it? So she basically gave us the blueprint and it's really pretty amazing, but it's pretty simple. It's really, she treats her agent referral network just like she teaches or uh, treats her sphere of influence or database. It's a consistent touch, comes from contribution, and always, always, always is connecting the dots uh, for the agents across the United States or in Canada, right? Or different different areas. So look up the migration report in NAR. I'm going to show you that in a minute. I have many people have a goal of getting 100 agents in their database, right? Tagging it as an agent referral partner so they know that's a separate group of humans in their database, right? Also, maybe finding those agents through Facebook closed groups with all our members of those referral groups. When you're seeing someone say, hey, I need an agent for in Chicago, and you see in the comments 16 people tagging the same agent, you do your homework, you reach out to that agent through direct message or a conversation and say, hey, I would love to add you to my agent referral database. Um, as in my marketplace, we have people that move in and out of our area. If I ever have an opportunity of helping a buyer or seller connect with you, I want you to be my go-to referral partner. They're going to say yes, right? And they pay the percentage of the referral fee. I have never loved so much to be able to open up my bank account or see in the mail that I received compensation by just handing a name and a phone number to someone. But then the second thing is, is that I know that they were taken care of and that referral, that person, that aid that agent took care of my client um, and they had raving reviews. Send item of value referrals to two times a year, small gifts local to their area. So it's kind of like the traditional, like old school pop buys that you're going to give to your database. Well, then you're going to love on your agent referrals. So if they've sent you referrals in the last couple of years, you want to consistently maybe send them something in the mail that says, I appreciate you. Um, and I, I recognize that we're great partners. Send item of value emails to your database agent or partner. So giving you specific examples of items of value. Maybe you recently did a client event and you have a checklist. Maybe sharing all that, sharing that checklist to those agent referral partners, those hundred agents across the United States. 
They're not competition. They're your partners, right? So you can say, we had a great client event. Here's a checklist that we use. Hope you can use that and customize it and make your client events amazing. Maybe you have a little pop by tag that you use. Maybe you drop something off for the 4th of July. Maybe providing that Canva or uh, whatever format you put the tag in and say, hey, this was a pop by tag that was a big hit for our database. Here's a template so you could use as you uh, touch your database in the future. So always saying, hey, I've done something that maybe is a win. Maybe you can use it to gain more business. If I was an agent receiving that email and receiving, receiving that free download or free template or free checklist, I'm going to remember that you are uh, your goal was to help me grow my business. I'm going to remember you as well. Then post a photo of the what we call the hashtag colored envelope. So this is Desiree. She has uh, these blue envelopes and she posts them on social media and then tags the agents that referred her or referred business to her throughout that month. So you're going to say, well, what the heck is in that envelope? Well, we all know that we get paid electronically now. So it's most likely, or it is a closing disclosure, maybe a copy of that uh, check or electronic payment, a handwritten thank you note that says, thank you so much for your opportunity uh, to refer clients to your neck of the woods. But really what she's doing is she's teaching her database. She's teaching her social media that even though maybe she's in Charleston, South Carolina, that also she's got relationships with people throughout the world. So she's the resource for all of that. Teaching that mindset that you're always connected to different cities and different agents. That's why that colored envelope. So I have people that choose their color, purple, pink, green, lime green, navy blue, black, whatever it is. You choose your color that represents your brand and being consistently taking photos of every time that you send a referral out, uh, commission out to the world and tagging that agent. Last couple things, attending a conference that's not in your area. Get out of your city, bus ride, plane ride, car ride. Make sure that you're going outside of your market so you can um, build up your agent referral network. When you go to a conference, I know we all have our little agent friend group that's in our local community, but we need to make sure that we're spreading our wings and mingling with agents than other markets and other cities so you can add them to your agent referral network. And something that's super fun, um, we're seeing that, and I think this is so important now more than ever, is that hosting quarterly virtual agent referral mastermind. So what if you scheduled a Zoom call with three agents that are killing it in Florida, Texas, Ohio, right? And maybe you're like the Oprah of the, of the meeting and you're actually facilitating the questions, right? And you invite all your agent referral partner, partners to join you on this Zoom so you can talk about what the best strategies in the market are. What are some things they've had to do to pivot through uh, the transition of the changing market? But the cool thing is you're providing free resources and free ideas to your agent partners literally by just putting on a, a literally a Zoom mastermind and then blasting it out to your database with that recording. Uh, and then I have some people even hosting 15 minute like virtual coffee appointments using like Calendly or you can book me where you're just chatting with an agent for 10 or 15 minutes. So they're going through direct message through Facebook, Instagram, and they're saying, hey, I'm trying to build up my agent referral network. Would you be open to a 15 minute virtual coffee chat so I can get to know you a little better to make sure we're a good fit as a partner? So number two is agent referral network. I can't say it enough. This is super important. We are mentioning the NAR migration report. You literally Google NAR migration report. This pops up. It literally shows you who is going in and out of your market. So the upper part is the gains. The, up, the lower part is the leaving. If I'm looking at, hey, I need to be strategic with who I'm in business with, agent partners, I probably would target the people that are coming from and to my, my area so I know uh, who to target. Basically, we look at this overall in a general sense, two people per state. We all know there's more than two people necessary in a state because of those big cities and big areas in our marketplace, but maybe that's a start. That'll get you to your first hundred and then follow that, that basically that eight touch plan we just talked about. Agent to agent network is a gold mine. And the crazy thing is it's so heavily focused on listings because they're most likely moving to another market. So they got a listing in, let's say, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and they're moving to, you know, Charleston, North Carolina, right? So they're going to have a listing for you as you build that relationship. 
Number three, this one is a gold mine. We know that the sellers are sophisticated. They watch HGTV. They know they probably, or most of them know, they need to potentially um, upgrade their home before they put it on the market, right? So who do they call their favorite contractor, right? The ripping out carpet, refinishing hardwood floors, painting neutral colors, updating kitchens and bathrooms. And if we can get on the front end of that, we are the connector of that vendor. And we are also the connector to the listing appointment, right? So two things. One thing is I personally, if there's an opportunity for you to have an opportunity where you're in a farm, say a neighborhood Facebook group with permission of the admin, make sure you're playing in the sandbox nicely with other real estate agents, but providing a vendor directory of every possible vendor. I have people literally going into their farm neighborhood Facebook groups and saying, hey, we want to build out a beautiful vendor directory for all the people that have got side hustles, that people that are in our community, in our neighborhood, so we can feed their families first. And so a little quick example is providing, and I'll send this to you, is just a neighborhood vendor directory, alphabetical, all kinds of things. Um, I always say, tell people what that I coach is it's not just the contractors, right? It's lifestyle vendors as well, A to Z, right? So the accountant is just important. The dentist is just important. The carpet cleaner, right? So go alphabetical A to Z method and find everybody. Because if you're moving to your market, let's say they move from Texas and now they're moving to Virginia, they don't have that go-to dentist. They don't have that pediatrician. They don't have that mechanic that they used to have in Texas. And you're going to be the resource for them. And they're going to remember that. Um, so that's a, another thing. Then we see often, again, sellers are always constantly updating and fixing and upgrading their house, providing a printed and digital copy of that vendor list every year. So here's a Canva temp that I'll send you. Uh, not rocket science, it's alphabetical. And basically it works your way through. So again, updating this every single year. Okay, if you don't add or subtract anybody, you're changing maybe the color, changing the year, but every year you're gonna touch your database at least two times. The first time, the beginning of the year, I always tend to like to do this January, February, March to say, hey, we're about to update our vendor directory. Who do you know that needs to be on our directory? So do that touch. Then when you're saying, hey, when I get this directory updated for, let's say 2025, do you want a copy of it? digitally or a printed copy, I can drop it in the mail. That is a touch point. That is an opportunity for you to say, hey, number one, I'm providing value. And number two, how can they contribute to the vendor directory as well? They may know a good contractor, carpet cleaner, whatever it is, right? Touch point. We know that sellers are using vendor directories and why not have this as a resource in their junk drawer, um, um, magnets, stuck to their refrigerator and oh by the way it's brought to you by your trusted real estate agent all right number four golden letter i've seen this used in many different opportunities i personally coach people to use it in what we call the multiple offer situation so i'll send you a copy of this golden letter but in in a situation where you're working with a buyer you are in a multiple offer situation there's six offers unfortunately you're not the high offer right so what you're going to do is take this golden letter and you're going to mail it to everybody in the neighborhood that simply says, hey, we put an offer in on a property in your neighborhood. We were not the winning bid, but I have a highly qualified buyer that wants to be in your neighborhood. Reach out to me and let's see if we can do a private transaction. Or if you do have an agent, have them connect with me so we can have a transaction happen. Win-win. You, the seller, sell. My buyer gets the, gets the property in the neighborhood that they want. Now, full disclosure percentage of, of conversion on this is low. But the reason why I say that on the buyer side, because really what it does is opens up the opportunity of that hit. They, they raised their hand as long as they don't have an agent representing them. They actually said that they're willing to sell. The reason why I say it's a low conversion is because buyers are picky, right? Maybe the buyer that they looked at that property in that neighborhood, you know, had a screen porch. And then this seller contacts you and said, yeah, I'm willing to sell. And that buyer's like, oh, but it doesn't have the screen porch and they're not willing to compromise, right? So it's really not a golden letter connected to the buyer, even though that's the language of the letter. It truly is attracting sellers to uh, to sell with you as you convert and as you build a conversation with the seller. Um, of course, if the buyer loves it, it's a win-win as well, but it is a seller strategy because it really is uh, something that you can connect with. 
This is not a mass letter that you send out to a thousand people. We literally see send a, about 20 people on that street, right? It's a, a hit uh, specifically connected to a offer that maybe didn't accept it prior. Great opportunity to connect with property owners to see if they have interest in selling. All right, the next one, super important, but some people forget about this, right? If you are the listing agent of a property, you have an opportunity to actually add two people to your database. Yes, you have your seller that just went under contract, that just closed. Of course, they're going to go in your database. But you also have the now the new purchaser of that property, right? You know their name based on the contract uh, offer that they wrote. You know the address because, aka, they just bought that house right? You don't obviously know their contact information, things like that. So people are like, uh, is this the right thing to do? Well, I'll tell you that unfortunately, statistically, their agent, their buyer agent, statistically is not going to work with them again. Such a low percentage. NAR says 27% of agent, uh, of used of the consumers used their agents before, but 73% of them said they would. So there's a huge gap in 23, 27% use the agent and 73% said they would. Those are what we call orphan buyers. The agent, the buyer agent that sold the property, which was your listing, that agent isn't going to follow up. That isn't going to put them in the database. That isn't going to do the equity reports like you're going to do, right? Just sending them once a year, a home anniversary, happy anniversary, and an equity report is enough, right? I personally, in the 20 years, I have all the time they're literally calling me after seven eight years and they're like hey we, we you sold us our house we're ready to list with you and i look up in my database i'm like i didn't sell you that house but what i did was i used i put them in my database as an orphan buyer right and why did they reach out to me and not their past agent that's no longer in contract with them right it's because i stayed in contact with them i provided value so consider adding the orphan buyer if you're a listing agent and you know there's a buyer transaction in there add them to your database. They they get a monthly, I mean, they get an annual thing in the mail, right? They're not going to get a phone call from you. They're not going to get an email from you. You're not bombarding them like that, right? If they have an agent that relationship they're continuing, good for them. They'll throw your stuff away, but there's a high probability that they're not. All right, number six, nosy neighbor open house. I don't know about you, but I have done probably at this point in my career, thousands of open houses. And something that makes me so grumpy, I've done all, all the marketing, I've done all the research, I've done everything, and I sit at this open house and not one person comes to the door. And I get frustrated. Or I go to the open house, I host the open house, and I have six people come through and all six of them have representation of an agent. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. Well, what I want to encourage you and what my strategy and many of my coaching clients have realized is that let's turn this into a seller open house, right? So let's say you're doing the open house Sunday, two to four. Let's open that house up 30 minutes prior, 1.30 to the neighborhood. And we're going to do a 30 minute preview just for the neighbors. So the nosy neighbors can go in there, right? So you can pull a list from Mojo Sells, uh, pull a list meaning you can get names, phone numbers, and emails. Um, it's you literally it's a map search it's like fifty dollars a month month to month so get in there get your addresses get your emails get your phone numbers of the na neighborhood you're planning to do the open house we also use a system called sly broadcast sly broadcast is an automatic vo automatic voicemail right so mojo sells you're going to download the phone number already been vetted through the do not call list so you're safe you're going to upload that into slybroadcast.com and you're going to create a voicemail and the voicemail is going to be pretty simple, and I'll send this to you um, via in the uh, download information. But the script is the same, right? So it's going to be through voicemail. If you want to do door knocking, we coach definitely coach people to do door knocking up to 50 homes and the surrounding area. You can even um, do an email blast. You could do all kinds of things, right? But the script and dialogue is pretty simple. Hey, we're doing an open house in your neighborhood at 123 Smith Street. We're actually doing the public open house from sun at Sunday from two to four. And we're doing a 30 minute preview for the neighbors just so, so you kind of see what's in there. Uh, 30 minutes early at 1.30. 
What I would love for you to give me your honest opinion as a neighbor is I want to know if you really think the condition is up to par for the market, any maybe things that we need to change or upgrade or modify. And number two, the price. The pricing um, strategy is great, but markets shift, prices change, and there's nothing more important than knowing the pulse of the neighborhood through the neighbor. So could you be honest with me and come to this neighborhood preview and let me know a price and condition of the property? Uh, I would appreciate that. So 1.30, everything's ready to go. The people start walking in. You're obviously going to say, hey, are you here for the neighborhood preview? They're going to say yes or no. They are hopefully for the neighborhood preview. We've isolated them from the potential buyers, right? And then you're going to give them a tour, but they're going to ask those questions like, what do you think of the condition? What do you think of pricing, right? You're also going to pepper in questions of how long have you lived in the area? What is the best and the worst part about this neighborhood? You want to see if there's any in there's any motivation on their part to see if they want to sell their property and maybe upgrade or trade up in their property. Of course, then you're going to, if you um, see them at the open house, you're going to write a handwritten note. This is thanks for coming to the open house. If you need a, a, a property market analysis, I'm happy to do so. If you door knock and you actually have conversations with them, you're going to also do a handwritten note that says, thank you for opening the door today and let me know if you need to do a market analysis. This is a huge, huge push for the sellers in a market. There is a high statistic that within 50 people of the last for sale sign, one to two properties will go on the market. So in 50 properties or 50 addresses, two of them are going to put a new for sale sign on in their yard. And why is it not you? Why are you not capitalizing? You're already doing the open house anyway. You're already going to be there. You're already putting open house signs out. Why not isolate and really focus energy on your sellers in that neighborhood, right? Love it. And I'm sure you're going to pick up some sellers that way. All right, we got two more as we kind of wind through the rest of this. Um, I hope you're taking notes. I hope you have some aha moments. And I hope you really are finding maybe one or two of these that you can implement very quickly. We put eight in here. We have many, many more and other trainings that we offer. I would just say don't implement them all at the same time, right? Pick your one or two favorites from today's training and implement, 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 emphasize, 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 right? Because I want you to make sure you squeeze all the juice out of each one of these systems. Um, and over time, you're going to see a huge uptick in your seller business. So number seven sounds so simple. And yet I see postcards, I see flyers that you're sending out with your hard-earned money this postage is not cheap. Printing is not cheap. And it has no call to action. It has nothing that's sticky. I don't know about you, but if I go, when I go to the mailbox, I literally open my mail over the trash. And my decision is keep or throw away, keep or throw away, right? And we got about three seconds to decide if we're going to keep this product, piece of paper, flyer, postcard, envelope, or we're going to chuck it in the trash, right? So if you're going to spend time, effort, and energy in creating a direct mail piece to people, you need to make sure it's sticky. So sticky is it, they won't throw it away. So maybe you're putting local events such as a high school football schedule. Maybe you're teaming up with a vendor partner through your vendor database, right? Maybe a good example, one that worked really well for me is in the fall mailer, we would connect with our landscaper. He would do gutter clean out and leaf removal, things like that. And he would do it at a 20, 20, $25 off coupon. So on the bottom of our postcards or our mailer, it would say, hey, there's $25 off if you mention this postcard and contact our landscaper. He does an amazing job to remove leaves for the fall season. Obviously, you're going to be in connection with that vendor. Hey, I put this out there as a free promo. Do you agree? Yes. Number two, I want to track who actually cashes in on that promo. So if you can get a, when you get a call or an email to set up, um, you know, landscaping leaf services, I'd love to know who that was. So I can also reach out to them to thank them for using you as a win-win, right? $20 off a car wash detailing. You use your vendors as an opportunity um, and you're not paying for it. If they cash in, they're giving a discount to the, to the vendor. The vendor is getting a win because they're not having to pay for promotion. You're doing it anyway, right? Also, seller promotion of the month, right? So providing with maybe it's a $250 panning allowance, but specifically you have to put a deadline. So by February 15th, if you do a, a listing consultation with me, I'll 
put this towards uh, a credit towards closing for a $250 painting allowance, carpet cleaning allowance, kind of change it up, things like that. Last thing I want to mention on this slide is I am not creative. In fact, sometimes I get intimidated by how beautiful some of these postcards look or these newsletters look. And I discovered, which you may or may not know, that there's a beautiful, amazing company out there called Elevated Agent. And they've already done all of the hard work. They've created the graphics uh, that you may be using in uh, your, your direct mail, right? So the cool thing is it has a whole list of newsletters, all kinds of postcards, things like that. You're going to download them and it goes directly into your Canva account. You can then upgrade those with the facelift of your face and your colors and your logos, things like that. So direct mail is not dead. In fact, there's high statistics that sellers are much more heavy with direct mail than buyers, right? It's two reasons. Number one, it's a property, right? They already own a purchase property. So you have a strategic address to target them to. Number two is sellers are typically a little bit older demographically in age, right? So there's something different about going from a digital with a buyer, you know, social media, email, things like that. But sellers literally love the actually holding, touching, feeling that promotional product and they hold on to it. And I can tell you countless times I've been to a listing appointment in my flyer, my vendor list, my postcard, all the things I've been sending them, they're literally in a folder or they're stuck to their refrigerator. So realize that hunt direct mail is not dead. And in my opinion, you should always be direct mailing your top 100, your top 100 in your database, meaning the cream of the crop, the best of the best of your humans that you know you're going to refer, they're going to refer business to because they have in the past or they have the potential in the future. You need to be dropping something in their, in their mailbox. Uh, maybe it's quarterly, so you can save on printing, save on postage, but we need to make sure we are targeting our top 100 through direct mail. Okay, so seller, 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 sticky direct mail is a big win. All right, and then the last couple things as we kind of head into the finale of this training is, I know you're doing this. Please tell me you're doing this. Home anniversaries, right? It's funny, I coach people of all different production levels, all different team levels, one, one solo agent up to teams of 10 or 12. And home anniversaries are where they literally stumble. Home anniversaries are past clients, repeat clients. Think of it as food, grocery, clothing, right? You buy or go to a grocery store once or go to a clothing store once. You most likely, if you had a good experience, you're going to go twice, go three times, go four times, right? We got to remember and remind them that you're here and you're there, right? These are great for also for those orphan buyers. But past clients are your future business. Not rocket science. Go to MLS, pull up your history, organize it by month. So when you're doing your equity reports, might as well do the home anniversaries. And you're like, oh, but they're going to get two pieces of mail. Yeah. One is personal that says happy home anniversary. It's been amazing. I can't believe it's been three years, four years, five years. I hope you're, let me know if you need any other real estate uh, question answered. That's a, a warm touch, right? That's a personal conversation. Then they do the equity letter. That's a professional touch, right? That is uh, business. That is language that they're talking, that's speaking to them in a different uh, emotion, right? So don't get caught up in, oh, but I'm sending two things in one month. It's not going to kill you. It's going to, it's two different messages to the same person. At the end of the day, it's about connecting them with you and you with them and remembering that you're the realtor of choice, right? Again, you're like, oh, I can't think of where to get them from. Etsy has like a thousand of them, right? I literally type in home anniversaries, look at all these cute little home anniversary cards, purchase enough to get you going so you have them in stock so you don't have the excuse or reason of, oh crap, I ran out of home anniversary cards. Drop them all the same time. I always say the 25th of the month, I have a calendar reminder to pull home anniversaries for two reasons, for my equity reports and for my home anniversary. So the 25th of the month, I pull my database or I pull my MLS and I say, all right, I have 12 people that I need to send these to this month, going into the next month, right? Write them at the same time, get them all mailed out. They don't, you don't need to be like one was closed on the 20th, one closed on the 10th, one closed on the 5th. Get them all done at the 25th of the month. Give it a seven, five, seven days to get through the mail. They'll hit about the second or third of the, of the new calendar month. And the win is that you uh, did your touches for your sellers. Okay. Hopefully this training inspired you to focus on listings. 
we know for every listing taken, you get two more leads. Most likely they're going to be buyer leads. You're going to squeeze out all that juice from every prospecting and marketing system that you completed. It's not wasted effort. It's not wasted money. It's an opportunity for you to build a system for, like we said, that trade up market, that seller trade up market that is going to happen in 25 and 26. And are you going to be on the front end of it or the back end of it? So we just completed the seller lead session in our series. We have four options. If you signed up for the entire bundle, have no worries, have no fears. All of these downloads and all the content will come to you via email so you can enjoy them. Um, if you want to pick up one or two more of these training sessions, it's offered throughout the month of August. So you can definitely go back and purchase those and we'll be sending them to you. Uh, hopefully you got information out of this that you could implement today. And my last and final request is take a minute and scan this QR code for me. This is our Google review. We have almost 300 reviews. Uh, we, I specifically gain business, buyers, I'm sorry, listing, I'm sorry, not even buyers, seller. I gain business coaching clients or training clients because they Google me and they see amazing job that we provide to our clients, right? So if you could take your phone out, scan this QR code, please, please, please provide a Google review, a sentence or two about maybe something you learn. Uh, you're insp inspired to make things happen or results from this, please do that. I would appreciate it. On the left-hand side is our coaching um, kind of tier product. Uh, we coach for your budget. So we have a two-week blitz. I call it a two-week kick in the butt. That's something that if you feel like you just need a little bit of coaching to kind of reset the rails, that's 195. We do group coaching. The caveat with that is we need at least um, six people in that program. So maybe uh, if you could gather some of your fellow agents and we could put a group together, that'd be great. I have people on a waiting list so we can put ours together. This is virtual. So it would be even cool to have a group, a mixture of different brokerages, different locations. Uh, so you guys can grow and learn together. If you have an admin or staff on your team, just so you know, what inside our coaching program, we can coach your admin or your, or your team staff as well. Sometimes that's a win because as we're coaching you, they can be coaching, uh, be coached as well. So it's cohesive. One on one coaching is probably the most popular. It's one on one at three ninety five. Uh, just make a note. It's traditionally four ninety five, but because you provide you're doing training with us, we, we knock a hundred dollars up off a month. And then leadership coaching is if you have multiple businesses, maybe it's not real estate. We coach business coaching, right? So maybe you have a property management company. Maybe you have. Um, HVAC business, right? Airbnb business, right? So if you're doing multiple businesses, we do leadership coaching. Also brokerages reach out to me sometimes in the leadership positions uh, for recruiting or growing or more profitable in their in their brokerage or their team. That would be uh, what leadership coaching is about. And at the end of the day, if you want uh, to reach out to me, you see my phone number, you see my email, Let's set up a discovery call and have an opportunity to see if coaching is right for you. I say this all the time, that there's a difference between training and coaching. Today, I hope you got a lot of training, a lot of good juice out of what we're talking about. We went through eight seller strategies so you can be on the right side of the market, right? So you can be the owner, not the employee. One thing that's huge is that in training, you have to implement. You have to be self-accountable to take the tools and take the resources and actually do the work and implement versus coaching. I'm with you. I'm shoulder to shoulder. We chunk it down a little bit more. We go specifically task by task. We coach you through 60 to 90 days to get these systems in place and accountability. And I, you know this, I know this nutrition, health, fitness. Sometimes we unfortunately let ourselves down before we would let some let others down right and so in our coaching program we coach you to the whole person we make sure that you implement what your plan is we make sure you actually put in action what you say you're going to do and sometimes in training we get that beautiful training workbook and we have that smart shelf and we have this recording and we don't actually implement the work versus coaching aka the coach i'm there to push motivate and remind you that we got to hit this stuff. We got to get it completed. So these systems are in place for your sellers 
Uh, so you actually have a abundant business and the listing space. Well, thank you so much for your time and hope you enjoyed this recording and this training session. If there's anything I can do, always, always reach out. You've got my cell phone number. You've got my email. I'm literally a phone call, text, and email away. All right. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your selling season here in 2024. And if you're going on to the two, three, and four of our um, training program for back to school, oh, buckle up. The next sessions are even better, more just packed with great content uh, to take your business to the next level. So have a great day and I will talk to you all soon. And really, I think that's all we can do. Have a great day. Bye.